Hello, YouTube survivors. This is Roy from Bootsy Sweet Tots Guide to Life and other disappointing experiences with a new video, one that I'm very excited about. I uh, love sewing. Uh, I'm pretty good at it, but I'm still an amateur. Uh, and I'm also very high maintenance, so wherever I go, I carry a lot of stuff. Uh, and this is about a very simple pouch. The simplest of pouches you can make. It's for certainly for a beginner, uh, very, very easy. Um, and um, it takes, I, I take you through very, very slow steps. So uh, if you're a real expert, this is more for entertainment <laughs> than for uh, instruction. And uh, I have my sack, which is going to be replaced with fabric like this. And all of this goes in here. And I am ready for an outing. So, thank you for tuning in here. And uh, enjoy this video. Thank you. Well, hello. This is a very special video for me because it's my first sewing video. Um, I'm very excited about it. I'm a bit nervous. You know, I'm always um, experimenting with things. I'm not an expert sewer, but I'm a f adventurous sewer. I wanted to just share with you um, a very simple project after I show you what, it, what it's for. Um, this is a cinch drawstring backpack that I made many years ago, whereas it is, you can see by its fading now, it's, uh, it's been around a long time. There's some fraying at the top, which I'm going to fix with the new design. It was a prototype. Um, it, this is a cotton quilting kind of fabric. I um, wound up quilting it because I wanted this to be um, a little more substantial. Um, on the back, I have this beautiful corduroy that I found. Um, it's wearing well. Um, I like it a lot. Inside I have two zippered pockets. And this one I carry stuff in and uh, right now I have my father-in-law's, my, my late father-in-law's change purse with parking meter money in it. <laughs> um, and in this one I carry things like my checkbook and calendar and a pad pens and things like that. It's uh, very durable. I've had a really um, good use out of this. Um, I get compliments all the time and uh, I have to make some more. Um, also, that go what goes with this is a pouch that I made for traveling. Um, unfortunately, I got pickpocketed in Barcelona once. And as a New Yorker, that's very, very embarrassing. Um, there's a story behind that. I don't know how much time I want to spend on it. But anyway, I did get pickpocketed. It wasn't a, a disaster. So I decided to make something that's going to give me some security. And I made this over-the-shoulder pouch. It's a cross-chest pouch. Or I can put it around my neck and hide it in my shirt. Uh, I'm gesturing, which you can't see, which is interesting. Um, and I love it. You can see it's the bear theme. We're trying to keep to the bear theme. I'm having trouble getting this fabric. It's out of it's out of production. I wish I had bought the whole bolt of it. Anyway, uh, I get really fussy with this, including fussy cutting. If you can see here, this is a this is a pouch, a front sleeve where I keep. Why is that going in and out of focus? Hmm. This is where I keep uh, things that I have to get at in a hurry. Um, money, anything like that. Um, and I sewed down a little bit of a pocket so I can easily keep um, a pen. Oh, what is this? Oh, <laughs> and my, one of my mother's favorite... Uh, crochet hooks. This is made from ivory. Oh, no, we get distracted here. On the other side, 
I have a plastic sleeve and there I put like the boarding pass, uh, things like that in, or in this case my Belmont Racetrack horse racing cash card. Uh, keep track of how much I've lost. In this po pocket I have my passport and any other official documents. This way I don't have to fumble around for things. Everything's kind of organized. Um, and here I keep my cell phone and anything else that I might need. And it'll hold uh, enough stuff for security. And again, I put it inside my shirt when I'm traveling and uh, no one can see it. Um, I'm heavy enough <laughs> where it doesn't really show. God, did I say that on video? Well, I did. But anyway, so that travels with me. But what else travels with me now that I'm a senior and I have needs? I carry a pouch filled with some what I call bare necessities. Um, you know, we go on these day trips as seniors. We um, travel on sometimes buses. Sometimes we'll just um, walk around parks and things. And we can be gone 10, 12, 14 hours. And I find it necessary to just bring a lot of stuff with me. Uh, things like this. I bring um, sunscreen stick. I bring Kleenex. I bring antiseptic wipes. I bring an extra set of headphones. Um, I am a klutz, so I bring band-aids. I have some asthma, so I have to have my rescue pump. Um, being a klutz, I need stain remover. This is a mini stain remover from Tide. This is a spray antiseptic. Should I shake hands with a lot of people <laughs> uh, or touch handrails? This is uh, mouth, mouth uh, freshener, breath freshener. Um, I have lip balm. I have hand moisturizer. I have nail clippers and a nail file. Uh, if we go to Mexican, I have... Well, you know what that is. <clears throat> Cymethicone. This is my antihistamine pill. Um, if the Mexican food is even worse than we thought, I have some stronger stuff. <clears throat> Let it set at that. And I have toothpicks, and on occasion I'll carry a few other things. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I have a screwdriver that I carry <laughs> just for this one time because I brought my bubble gun with me and I wanted to change the batteries. Now, notice, da -dum, da -dum, this is not bare. I have two things bare theme. I have a pouch that's not. So my project is a very, very simple pouch to put all this stuff in so I can put my beautiful Zoomy to me. Oh my goodness, don't shoot me. To me. Um, pouch um, where it belongs in the luggage, the big luggage. Uh, this was from Delta Airlines when we were had the opportunity to fly business class once and uh, they put in here the toiletries, a toothbrush, little tiny toothbrush, little tiny toothpaste, mouthwash, eye uh, covers, eye mask, uh, moisturizer, and a whole bunch of other goodies. But I'd like to retire this and carry this with my big luggage instead of bringing it um, on a daily basis. So that's the project. It's going to be a little pouch. Um, oh, and I will be back to begin it. It's very, very simple. It's not going to be a frilly thing. It's a no frills because it's for me. I don't need the um, little extra finishings that I would normally put on something. So I'm going to make the simplest pouch that I make. Um, and
and I hope even an early beginner um, I think will be very easy and um, those of you that are experienced I hope just my videos are entertaining <laughs> and you get a chance to see a man's, a man's uh, thought process as he goes through <laughs> some of these projects um, I will be back um, and just a little sip of courage see you in a minute so here we are um, as you can tell, I'm into these bears here, all kinds of bears. Um, since my last beginning of the video, my granddaughter came up and moved all the, my bears around, but we fixed them up. I found this nice bear material. Um, the other material I had, I love, 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 and I'm saving it, saving it for um, a final bag that's just for me. And again, this bag is um, adjustable to any size you want. You can make it whatever you want. I happen to have one here that's seven inches, hopefully by six and a half inches. And I have two panels, seven inches by six and a half, seven inches by six and a half of the outside fabric and two panels of the lining you can make it without lining and it gets even simpler and I would do that if I had a heavy weight like home deck fabric but this is a uh, light cotton um, this one's a cutie anyway what I do is I almost always back these little bags and most of what I do with the, a very light fusible interfacing this is a scrap I save a lot of the scraps so I don't remember um, what it was, but it's a Pellon product. If I can find it, I'll put it in the description down below. Um, so it's really very simple. You cut out your rectangles. Try to find it. This is ridiculous. <laughs> this is an exaggeration. Try to find a zipper that's longer than the width of your bag. You'll be cutting it off. I, on the other hand, I'll show you how that works as we go along. I, on the other hand, am very frugal, and since this is for me to use, my zipper is barely <laughs> big enough, barely big enough, uh, but I would suggest you use a bigger rather than a s smaller um, zipper. Okay, so let's get on with this, um, put everything together. What I do first... <clears throat> Let me put everything together here. What I do first is sew the lining right side up to the fashion fabric right side down. And I sew across the top. Make sure, because this is directional, you don't want the teddy bears upside down make sure that this is the top of the fabric and I'm going to sew about a quarter of an inch now now you can sew any width seam here just make sure it's the same on both parts of the bag um, I usually put a lead piece of fabric in there. It helps me keep control of um, the bird's nest that we sometimes get underneath the bottom of the fabric and it also helps control some of the loose threads because they all go out with uh, the lead fabric. So I'm simply sewing right along here for me and that's what I'm going to use. I'll back up to back tack it just a little and then go across. Very, very simple. I think this is wonderful because you can make a lot of these if you really want to. And guess what happened? The bobbin ran out. 
Well, reality TV, here we go. You can see here's where the bobbin ran out of thread, and I just kept sewing merrily along. So I've put in another half or quarter full bobbin, so this may happen again. You will make sure that you have a full bobbin. Now, because I'm starting in the middle here, I'm going to take one or two stitches, and I'm going to back tack one stitch just to make sure that's secure. It's not terribly important to the construction on this piece, but um, I just like to do that as habits. I come to the end, hopefully with thread, and I do, and I'll back tack a little. The machine I'm using is a an old Juki. I've had it, gosh, probably 10, 15 years. Um, I love it. It's straight stitch only. It does not um, do zigzag or anything else. I'm going to put my fabric back in here. So it's there when I need it. So we have now, um, anyway, the Juki is a wonderful machine. I love it. So it's a, almost like, a, they call it a home commercial home commercial sewing machine. So then what I do here now is I set the seam, so I'll press this and then I'm gonna open it up. I try not to push an iron. I try to more press. Um, mainly I don't want to stretch the fabric in any way and get it distorted. So what I'm doing now after I've turned the fabric over, I'm pressing towards the lining. Do you see how that is? And I'm just setting that nice tight crease. Got that. And you can see now that we have a finished edge there. The, the other edges are all are going to be unfinished in a way. We're going to overcast them at the end. But this is not uh, a bag that I would sell. This is not a bag I would um, give as a gift because I'd like it more finished uh, and professional. But for me, this is great. Now, not the neatest craftsperson. Here's the issue with this zipper. Normally what you would do, if you have a long zipper, is take the zipper and sew it here like this. Okay, so you take it to the machine and you'd sew it here. Because all this will get cut off later on. But because I have the small zipper and I see the steel end of the zipper and the head of the zipper with a little bit of metal um, here, I'm going to adapt this zipper to my project. So I'm going to grab a piece of thread and I'm going to go back and forth. Oh, I would say... not quite a zip is a uh, scissors width just a little bit more actually than a scissors width away from this metal edge now I can take the metal edge off or I can cut the zipper which is probably what I'm going to do and I'm basically bar tacking the zipper closed here you want to secure that fairly tightly because this is going to, until this construction is done, this is going to hold the zipper closed and you don't have the teeth. Ooh, did you see that? Anyway, this is reality. This is not the glitzy production scenes that you see on a, a lot of the other channels. I don't know how to do that and I don't have the staff. It's just me, just me in my sewing room, sewing room with my critters. Um, I've been 
doing a lot of um, online chats. No, I haven't been doing them. I've been following and joining a lot of the live streams onto YouTube. It's such fun. If you find a community of people um, that you think fit your lifestyle, do the same things that you do, uh, chat with them. Now, I'm not going to use my good scissors here, just in case I hit the metal piece. I'm going to go as close as I can to that metal stop, and I'm cutting it off. Now, my stitches are going to hold the zipper closed temporarily. Once we assemble it, the construction will hold it closed. Now, here, almost always, when I'm sewing in a zipper, almost always, I just sew these two ends together. Sometimes, let me see if I have some. Sometimes I'll use one of my sewer's best friends, painter's tape, and I'll paint this, I'll tape this closed. Um, and actually for today, this will help, this will help me um, sew this tightly without there we go, without um, having the zipper stay open too far. Now here again, there's a metal thing. I don't know whether you can see the metal stop. Let's see if I can zoom in on this. I think I fixed that silly autofocus. So I'm going in close to that metal, but not too close. These are not going to be seen. This is just a little construction technique because I'm frugal. You can call me cheap. Not really, but I, I just want to make sure that I don't waste anything on myself here when I can use it for gifts and opening in September. FuzzyBearsPlace.com where I'll be putting some of my um, work on the market for sale just uh, to support my hobby. Again, here I'm going to I didn't do a lot of sewing there, and it's not neat, and it's not embroidery. It's just simple construction. Now here again, I want to, there's a space here between the metal end of the zipper. And again, I'm not using my good scissors in case I hit that metal. All right. Now, the next part is easy. You know, we're close to done here. Not really, but close. I like the zipper over on that side to close on that side for some reason. Now, what I'm doing here... Um, do you want to use pins or do you want to use glue? Let me know. <laughs> I'm going to use... Let's see if I can find it. I'm going to use glue. This is ordinary school glue. In fact, I picked up by accident the glue that's purple. Uh, it'll clear, dry clear. And I'm just putting a line of glue here. Try not to do what I just did <laughs> and get it on the teeth of the zipper. I'll have to deal with that. And that'll dry pretty quickly. And what I'm doing now is lining up lining up the edge here of the zipper with the edge of the material and trying to stay just a scant, almost like a sixteenth of an inch away from the teeth of the zipper. Okay. Oh, look at that. I got some paste. It's actually paste, Elmer's paste. Now, you'll see here, this is a problem for me because I use a short zipper. There's some, can you see the fabric at the end? So my bag is going to change dimensions. The most important thing is I'll trim it to match the zipper. The zipper is the most important part of this. Now I'll take this back over to the machine and I'll stitch this down. Luckily, the glue doesn't 
gum up the needle. My little piece of fabric is going to collect all the loose threads. Now, I uh, this is a very small press of foot on these machines. Oh, sorry. You see, this is very small, but I'm um, if you can see this, I have like just about a sixteenth of an inch, and this is probably a quarter of an inch at most from this edge of the foot. You could use your zipper foot. In fact, I would suggest if you don't have this kind of a narrow foot, and a lot of the machines are coming out with them, if you don't have this, I would suggest you use a zipper foot. Okay, and we back tack at the end. Cut the thread. Get my thread catcher. See how nice this is? Collecting all those loose threads. They're not getting caught in the bottom of the wheels of my chair or stool. Which is nice. There used to be a uh, man on television who's um, a sewer in the 1940s and 50s for lots of stars. His name was George W. <laughs> George w. Trippon. And I uh, loved to watch George Trippon. If you feel up to it, go <laughs> and um, check out his videos. They're priceless. Okay, here again, <coughs> I put some glue on. I'm lining up. Now this is crucial. It has, excuse me, it has to be, your bag has to be straight. You really, this is, cru I mean it really is. If it isn't, straighten it up now. Um, straighten it up now is the time to straighten it up. I could cut this off actually, but I'm not going to because I'm going to be able to fit that into the seam. So you really won't. Uh... You see, this is a little wonky. You see that? I'm going to trim that a little bit. Okay. There we go. Now I feel better that this is going to be a better fit. Okay, now back to the machine. We're going to sew the same exact concept, the same exact process, rather, right along the edge here, back tack. I don't know how many people know of Nancy Zeman for years and years and years since the 1980s. She had a, uh, up until very, very recently, she had a show called Sewing with Nancy. She's the longest running sewing back tack there, longest running sewing instruction channel of uh, show on television. Anyway, she passed this year and was very, very sad. Um, I was a big fan of Nancy Zeman uh, for years and years and years, and I think she taught me so much just by uh, her gentle ways. Now, I made a mistake here, which you should remember not to do, and that is... Um, when you get near the head of the zipper pull, move it out of the way and your stitches. Can you see I got very close here? You don't want to do that. So it's a do as you do as I say, not as I do. All right. Well, basically, we're done with the zipper insert. Got the lining on the inside. And the fashion fabric on the outside. So all we're going to do is
match all the sides make sure that zipper is open now this one actually actually caught up some of the fabric I don't know how that happened well, well not the fabric the uh, part of the zipper oh no it didn't it looks like it did so we're just going to sew around simply going to start what I do I don't take a chance that it's going to there we go. I'm not going to take a chance that uh, the feed dogs and the press of foot is going to push everything out of line. So I'm going to start oh, start from here, left my starter fabric out, and I want to be about a quarter of an inch, three eighths. I'm coming up to the zipper, and now I'm going to go slow because I'm going over those plastic teeth. Did you hear that? That's why you got to go very slow. Thankfully the needle was sharp and there was no issue. Okay, so we do that. Side. And my fabric thing here took up all the loose threads. I'm turning it over simply because um, I don't want the fabric on that side of the press of, of that side of the sewing machine. Okay. Again that sacrificial piece of fabric helps. Back, back tack. And if you hear your machine clicking like mine is, you hear that clicking? And you um, can you're able to oil your machine then that's a sound to me that it needs to be oiled there we go and got that now oh let me show you this do you remember this first time I started this I didn't have my starter in there and can, can you see what happened? I don't know whether you can see the bird's nest here. And you got all this Michigan sticking out there. We don't want that. Okie doke. And now I sew across the bottom. We are done, folks. This is the end. And I have my... I have my, um... Bear pouch. So you can leave it like this, if you'd like. While I'm thinking of it, this way. Get this guy under here. So then you just turn it inside out and you have your bag. I'm going to do something to finish this edge and that's simply an overcast stitch. You can use a zigzag. My machine has a my other machine is a brother, an old brother that's probably 35 years old. Um, I'm going to be doing an overcast stitch uh, which this old brother still has. It's one of the first ones. Um, so you simply zigzag all around. Um. So this is my old brother machine. It's set up for an overcast stitch. It um, is five millimeters wide and I have 1.5 stitch length. And I simply overcast you can zigzag the edge um, I love this old machine it served me so well through the years uh, it's one of the first machines that had like a built-in computer and it doesn't do um, embroidery but it has its share of fancy stitches it's been a workhorse 
I've actually sewn canvas on this uh, with the right needle. So um, I've been very happy with it. Like anything, I could upgrade it, but I just hate to go and put this in mothballs. Um, and here we have our overstitching. I'm going to finish this and I'll meet you back at the table. Oh, back at the table. Here we are. Here's that bird's nest that I should have gotten rid of. Normally you would clip the corners here, but there's not a lot of fabric there. I kept the seams pretty narrow. Now all I have to do is turn this inside out. It's fairly substantial. You can see how heavy it is now with all the layers of interfacing. And that'll make it very durable for me. And poke out the corners as best you can. I'm going to use my little bone turner. This is a great tool for both fabric crafts and what I'm sort of binging, binge watching lately is the journals, the junk journals and those videos. They're so much fun. I keep poking and manipulating. This one's a little, this one probably, oh, there it goes. I was going to say this one could have benefited from cutting the corner, but I don't have to. You want to, even though it's just for me, you want to get rid of all the loose edges, loose threads, rather. And we have a zippered pouch. I'm going to press it. I'm going to press it open a little bit. It's going to match my new backpack. And all my goodies are going to fit in there. Let's see if I have some of them. I can now it's smaller, but this was actually too big. So I'll put my headphones in and this and that. Oh sure, this is going to be fine. Perfectly fine. Yes, 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 yes. So anyway, I don't want to labor this. And there's my pouch. Um, again, I'm getting better at my videoing skills. Um, I'm solo at this, but I want to thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure. Please, um, <laughs> I got to say this again, I'm having a lot of fun. Um, a little frustrating because I don't have the equipment, but I'm having fun. So anyway, um, please come back. My next sewing will be in a little while. I'm going to uh, show you how I made a um, block for a commemorative uh, quilt that uh, the Quilting Marine has been working on. Um, you'll see this. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Thank you again. Please thumbs up if you like. Please leave comments about the video. Um, what can I improve besides the long talking, but it's sort of like a social event for me. And please um, share and subscribe. Uh, again, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Stay well. And as Nancy Zeman would have said, bye for now.